Hello, I'm John Dewey here, and now we've got the old dishwasher out, we're ready to put the new one in. And so we brought into the kitchen area here for the big reveal. So let's see what we got here to work with. Alrighty. Nice. Looks like a uh, stainless steel something or other. And, uh, yeah, so, I'll start by, uh, maybe, maybe I'll leave the protective cover on until I'm done or until I have to put the handle on. It's like a handle has to go on. And so I will uh, lay it on the back, back side, using some of these here corner pieces that came with it. I'll just lay it down flat, turn this thing over, and then hopefully we didn't get rid of the old one yet because you might need some parts off of that. So, I'll get in position. And right, we'll start the work out. Lay it laid over. So I'm to take this uh, front kick panel away here. So there's two screws on this particular model. And you want to keep these screws for later. This one here, I can tell just by the look of it, has a ton of sound insulation. So this should be a very quiet model to use. So I'll set that aside. And let's run next. From what it looks like here, looks like the valve, quite possibly, will be down there, where the uh, blue thing's at. And that is surprising to me, because I struggled a little bit to get the uh, old one off, which, uh, look at something like this here, you see. And, um, it was kind of odd, whoever did this before, they put some Teflon tape on this here. This is a compression fitting, so you don't put Teflon tape on a compression fitting. This right here had a ton of Teflon tape on it, but I took it off. And you can see here's actually, there's like a little ledge, because this used to have some uh, pipe compound on it. So this was used at least once before, and they didn't scrape the pipe compound off enough to get this all the way up in their model that I'm replacing. So that's going to go to the dump, probably, or be scrubbed off later to use. But now I'm looking at this one here. And I see there it has that kind of weird fitting, which maybe that's what they use nowadays. And um, you can see the drain here hooks in there, and then there's that part down there. Now for the drain hose, I already know this one. It comes with you know, a corrugated thing, corrugated, like a like a so. And uh, this part here actually will go into that black part way down there now. And this part here, the gray, will go to your um, garbage disposal, or if you have a, a sink, well, a drain, basically you drain your sink, or wherever, where this thing drains to now is where that one's going to drain to next. You might have to, depending on what size it is, whether it's garbage disposal or under, underneath the sink, you might have to cut this one here off. So I think this is a, a 7 8 and then inside, inner diameter in there, is a 5 8 and from trying by the old pipe we have working with, it's a 5 8 so I might have to cut that off, but I might not even use that. I might use this part down here, switch around some adapter, and adapt it to a longer hose, because this is more than the standard 6 feet allows. But that's for later fun. And other parts of the bottom here is uh, this little box here. I'm pretty sure that's where the electricity needs to hook up to it. And so I might have to use some kind of a cord or see if that one will reach. Because it is a, a kind of a stretch. So last but not least is that the hose that you take off your old one to use for the water inlet hose, if you have that sort of thing. Um, let me grab that real quick here. And uh, this hose would have been fairly reusable. And maybe it still is for some. But this right here you know, not so bad. This right here, don't turn by hand very much. And what happened there, I think someone had, what you do is with this kind of hose, you hand tighten it on, and then you do a quarter turn with a wrench. This one here was probably hand tighten it on, and then 500 turns with a wrench. And that's why it's uh, stripped out and not good anymore. Otherwise the hose is fairly good shape. And so I got a kit from the uh, hardware store, and to my surprise, it had 
a weird little uh, fittings in there. Actually, a few little fittings. But um, <clears throat> this kit here has this brass piece here, which is like the one I already showed you that was all gunked up and stuff. But it also has this one here, which I thought, wow, a hose bib. That's neat. Well, now I'm thinking, great, because I think that was what we need to hook that little blue fitting down there. So sometime between my last uh, dishwasher and this one, things have changed, apparently. The main thing I was buying this for was this uh, steel braided uh, hose. Three, it's compression, right? So, we've got that there. And I'm going to start adding parts to this. All right, for the electricity out. part, we got here a plug, three pronged, right? You see that? And on the end of this plug is uh, some weird wires. This here is meant for something else, but the um, the uh, ground I'll probably keep as is. The other two, which has these funny prongs on here, I'll just uh, snip them off so they won't be needed. And we'll do a uh, strip here, like so. Okay. And then this wire is pretty much pre-prepped to go. Um, next we'll do is uh, open up that little box down there and see what's going on there. That there is the electric box where it hooks up to. And we don't want to do the hard wire part. So what we're going to do is um, wire in a box in the adjacent cupboard to this one here and drill a hole through the cupboard to put the wire through the um, the plug. Need that. This comes off. There's a tab down there it goes into. And let's see what's inside here. Um, yeah, it just separates here, I think. No, it pulls back, pulls back, and then separates because there's little tabs down here. All right, so inside you can see we have a, uh, a hole here for the new wire to go through. We have a grounding spot, and we have uh, black and white wires. So I'll simply take said wire here that we just customized, and one of these parts here, uh, which doesn't come with it, that there is extra, but um. Yeah, it gets down like this, unscrew this part here, do this part here again, this is the back part. We'll feed it in through here, and put this nut back on here. Like so-ish. Alright. So I get this tightened down, and I believe they make a little wrench thing that actually goes on this side here, but I usually don't use these too often, so I don't got one. And I got them tightened, but in the wrong spot. So, let me find oh, something else here. We're going to back it up, let's see here. No. Hmm. All right. Grab this tool over here and loosen it up again. There. Don't need to loosen, just need to turn it around. Okay, so inside there, we will feed in the thing here. Our wires. Get in there. And get it right about so. And we will now go ahead and tighten that uh, little protector down there. Okay. 
don't want to really crush the wire, just you know, tighten it down so it doesn't slip out. And like so. Tight. Yes. Now in here we need some wire nuts. Let's just have to have some from the last thing they rigged up. And so I'll go with the ground first, the green one here. And since this thing has a loop in it already, I'll unscrew this all the way. And let's see here. Need that. So I'll go loop piece flat against the back and uh, metal piece and screw piece will go next here like so and see if we can get the thing to line up again all right so I can tighten that down nice and snug against it there that's grounded because this here is also the machine's grounded back here you see okay these two here we'll do our uh, wires and so I can figure out which is which doesn't really matter but in priority wise Let's see here. Plug left side, okay. Go on left side here. Left side. Left side rotates around to here. So this right here will be the black. So I like to twist these wires together. Find the black one. Twist them together, but they're already solid. Then I give these two a nice tight twist together, which I don't like that. That's gonna go bye bye. All right. Let's see here, give me some wire to work with. There we go. And back on this side too. There. Now, twist these guys around like so. All right. Twist this around here. And finally, braid these together. Nice and tight. All right. And I'll cut it down a little bit. And wire nut it. So it's all nice and tight. Then I'll do the same to the white. Reassemble the box and hang it back where it belongs. And wait to the next part. Okay, so I've got these tight on here. I'm going to twist, make sure they're tightened down there again. Make sure they're in the box, the middle box here. All right. And then attach this thing, which these wires need to get away from the business end. Because this here goes back on like so, without pinching the wires. And. Like a little puzzle. Uh, let's see, yeah, this goes on the outside here. You know, I just hook it like that. And then the bottom part. And like that. And you squeeze all together. And it's all self contained again. You get this tight. And this slips back upside down. And hooks down here. And up here. 
come here and up from there and then there's a uh, hole for that bolt to go back through and that is going to be it for the electrical part on this one I mean yes we'll have to uh, do a box in to plug this in but this is how I usually like to have them in is in a uh, you know a plug especially if you can get it accessible next to the other uh, cupboard then if something happens you can just unplug it by reaching the cupboard and unplugging it there tight tight and this here the other thing important is that it will basically feed the back we're ready to roll this thing back in there you can see there's like a wheel down here some of them have legs like the old one this has a wheel but uh, make sure this here comes basically through this part here. I'm just going to shove it in there. This one here has a lot of sound insulation, as you can see. You know, all this padding stays. There's some padding, like, or not padding, but there's here, like, foam on this one. That goes away. You think it's like star foam, which will go away on this. All this white snowy padding stays. Um, next, what we'll have is down here, we have this little drain deal. And what goes in there, normally, is this plastic hose thing that came with it. And so, you would take this in here, with the barbed area, and stick it in there, right? And, I might add, use a clamp. So this little packet of treasure that comes with it, you have these two metal things. They go to the top, which you'll see later. You have these two clamp things one of them or I think the green one maybe you would um, you know, basically slide on here put this in here and then bring it back some pliers and you know clamp it down here normally that's how it is but because we have an extended um, drain area we're not going to use this right here we're not going to use so go back over there. Also in this bag that I want to show has this Allen wrench for something. And last but not least some screws which they too will come in later to mount this into the cupboard. There's two of them in there. I'll leave them in there with these metal things here which come in later. And this other hose clamp here would have gone to the other end of the hose this one and it would go to your garbage disposal drain or um, sink drain. There's different sizes. There's a bigger size here. And if you were to cut it right around this notch here, you'd have a, a smaller diameter in there. Which I think is a 5 8 But that's going to go away. And, oh, let's see. That is almost basically it. You have uh, this right here, the water inlet, and that's going to be pretty easy. That's just going to be a thing that screws on here, but we'll, we'll do that a little bit. The next thing we'll do here is actually um, change out the valve. So the valve that's, we have, that we're working with is over here, and it looks like one of those kind of valves. And I turned the water off the house to remove the old one. And then I shut that valve and it stayed shut and I turned the water back on and it's drip free. But I have a feeling if I install this thing and it's all in place and I go to turn that valve back on, it'll probably leak. So instead of that kind of valve, I have a quarter turn valve that I'll replace it with. So I'm going to shut the water off the house again and replace that and I'll work on wiring in the outlet box which is going to be on their side of that hovered there. Or the electric to go to. because. We do have the um, electric cord there that's coming down, All right? And you can see there's nothing on it, so I'll put a All right, outlet success. in there. So I successfully changed out the valve, and I got in a one of those newer kind uh, quarter turns. So it's off now. You turn it the other way, it'll be on in full blast. And um, I already tried it with some. Uh, I, tried, I took the old hose, hooked it up to the end down there, down big finger down there, anyways, and um, let it run a little bit into a bucket and so it's all cleared out and uh, 
and it works. Then back over here, it's going to be hard to see. Back in the cupboard, I got here a uh, box. Mm hmm, somewhere. Maybe you just have to trust me on this. Or maybe what we need is a little illumination. Yeah, right, right there. You can see the silvery box back there. That was a pain to get in there, but it's in there nonetheless, and it too works. So, of course, just be able to pass through and go right into it. Now, the other thing I installed here, um, kind of installed anyways, is this right here, this black tube rubber hose. This is a newer type of rubber hose that was uh, from a hardware store that I picked up. I really don't like this stuff because they split, they seem like, and crack, but this is, I guess, a PVC rubber hose, and, uh, and it has, you can see it has like some little threading. If you look real close at the end of it, which it's not going to show on this, but um, the other thing I'm trying to do is, if it's a hot day and this is out in the sun, it'll probably be more manageable. If it's a cold day, it'll be hard to manage. So they suggest you use a little hot water to make this thing, um, you know, move around, which I did. And when I came to this part here, I found out this connector piece, which was on the old system. The old system had the dishwasher go from underneath here, through the cupboard, and to two other connections back behind this Lazy Susan thing, into the drain, which is underneath here. And that's bad. You don't want to have any extra connections back there you can't really get to them or see them. So, I bought me the, uh, for this instance, I bought a 10-foot uh, 10 10 hose, a 5 8 inner diameter, 1 inch outer diameter, and I'm not too sure what this plastic thing is. It's probably a little bit above 5 8 maybe. Maybe it's 6 8 Anyways, um, <laughs> but, uh, I took hot water and I dipped it into the hose in it, like a little pot of hot water, and waited a little bit, and then I went and was able to put this fitting on. Otherwise, this fitting wouldn't fit. Now, on the flip side, um, if I use the, another trick is use, I think, half-inch copper pipe. Copper piping, look a little something like this. Alright. Maybe if I, uh, no, other way. Uh, Ta-da! Half inch copper piping. This is from the old system. They had that thing down there, that gray thing, and this thing here. And this connected that 5 8 pipe like perfectly. It slid right in there and connected them together, and then you cramp them down with the radiator clamps there. But, um, I don't know. I don't like that as much as plastic thing. Sure, it's plastic, but all it needs to do is connect that pipe there, which is connected to now. And we will connect it to the bottom of the dishwasher pipe, which is over here. We already saw it, I believe. All right, there. Which, that gray one fit in there just about perfect. You know, you know once you tie it down with that rubbery hose thing there, it, it'll be great, or should be. But now that that's set up like that, that's going to be the last connection I do. The next connection I'll work on is probably the water. And I'll start by loosely, actually no, I'll start by using a, well, all right, so I'll I'll I have the water connector here, and yeah, if I felt like I could really turn this just a little bit more so it's pointing into the sides and not straight up, that'd be helpful, I think. But hopefully I don't need to because cause this is pretty tight. Like I, I tightened it down, I thought it was good enough, I think I turned it on, it might have just seeped just a little bit, and so I tightened it to this point here. And if I tighten it any more, it might break off. And the problem is here, you got to be careful, because you really want to use two wrenches, one for this part here, and one for the copper fitting on the back here. You don't want to break your copper fitting sweat, sweat solder, because it's not like a normal solder, like where, you know, iron might be uh, welded to iron. That thing there is, um, has, uh, you know, copper, copper, and some, uh, you know, filler in between. Anyways, got this here. Remember this here line, don't cross thread it, put it on there nice and easy, and you know, do it hand tightened. Let's see if I can get it on here. Um, hand tighten it, and then it just takes about a quarter inch turn, but um, sometimes it's hard to start for some reason. Try again here. So a quarter inch turn once you get it hand tightened. Alright, is it going on? No. Yeah. 
get these threads to line up a little better. There we go. So, got a hand tighten. Got me a uh, wrench for that. Actually, I might hang it tight a little bit more. There we go. And so, like I said, it's quarter inch turn. If you want a little insurance, maybe a turn and a half or so. No, full turn. Okay, so we got that done. Now the second thing is we have this here uh, golden piece. Look at that, solid gold. This here came with that kit to hook up with the um, new uh, dishwasher. You had to buy it separately. And uh, at first I wasn't too sure I need this for, but this particular dishwasher needs this fitting on it. On it. The other one needs that 3 8 fitting, which uh, look like something like this here. And this is like the old style, I guess. And this is the new style. And so what we do here is we have a compression fitting on here. We just undo nut and compression sleeve there. Those we don't need, so I'll put them up top. You see the threaded part here. And the other hose in from this will go into there. And um, same thing, you know, don't cross threads. Get it on there, hand tighten. Uh, this golden piece here, make sure there is a washer built in on the inside because you'll need that. And I got this about hand tightened, and I'm just going to hold it and give it another turn for some good insurance. And I'm going to kind of make sure this uh, this here is you know in the upright position. You know, do some little hose management here. All right, so. I can take my little rag out of there, and now we have all the connections in place. So I'll get the dishwasher in place. Alright, so I rotate this around, and now I'm going to talk wheels. Um, and what we've got here is this little wheel on the back. It makes it kind of easy to level it, because, um, yeah, you know, you can shift up and down. But, I was actually going to the manual, and they talk about how important they are, supposedly. See this here? There's this uh, little uh, wheel chart here. And so basically, depending on how height of your cupboard opening is, is how how um, much you have the, the legs drop down, which the legs are right up in here. There's a black thing, that's the bottom foot of the leg. But, um, but we have a little special case here. We also have in the wheel position. So, this right here, you can see that picture? That right there is um, basically the side of down here that you can't see. And I can't ram the camera around too much. But basically, when uh, the measurement I took is about 34 and a quarter of the opening height. But where this wheel's going to be, it's going to be more of a 34 and a half. Because it drops down about half an inch. So. This says position three, and right now it's in, I think position three. That's what's shown here. But if I turn it sideways so I can try to look at it here. Yeah. Let's see, there's two high, and then Go down low, there's it's like a low one there. So I think it might be in the right position. But I'll still take a uh, 3 8 3 8 inch tool here. And I'm going to go ahead and take this thing off just to see if it shows anything on the inside of this where I can't see because the wheel's in the way. All right, and the top ones, I'm not going to worry about the legs too much. I'm going to adjust them when it's actually in the spot. Okay, so maybe you can see there a little bit better the different hole amounts. All right, especially if I get on point here. Right, so you have different holes for the different position where it's going to go in. So I'm going to figure that out, 
basically I'm going to adjust it because once you get this thing back in there, you don't have to pull it back out to adjust. All right? When in doubt though, you want your dishwasher kind of tilting more towards the back. You want it level, right? You want it leveled out, but if you if it tilts more towards the back than the front, that's good. If it tilts more to the front, that's bad. You know, you don't have maybe some water leakage, who knows. So I'm going to do these two wheels, and then I think I'll be able to set it upright and get ready to, to roll it back in the spot. I still, I still need to hook up the parts to it, but we'll okay, get that. Okay, so then we pull sure. the drain hose back through the bottom here, and I pull the side flap away, and we got the radiator clamp, put on this hose here, and this hose here will fit right in this one for the drain. And so I'm going to get a bit better grip on this and push it down as far as it can go. And next we'll tighten this down to hold it in place with the, uh, I have a 5 16 nut driver. I want to snug it up, you know, pretty good. You don't want any leaks from this thing. And this hose here, I don't know if you can see it in the picture, but actually wraps up around the um, the side here a little bit. It has a high part, and you want you need to keep that in there. You need to keep the high part in. Um, okay, so after this is tightened up, I have the water hose come in through the back for the feed line. Ah. Tight. Don't want to rip the rubber though. So I think we got it tight enough there. Now this will go back through here. And what I'm talking about here is this hose here comes up, makes a loop. All that stays there. It's not to be undone, it's not to be extra hosing. And then back over here, we have our the blanket back in position. We've got the electricity coming out, which is going to go back to that hole there when we start pushing it in. We've got the water line, the silver one here, coming in underneath here. And the black tube, we're going to have to kind of pull as we go back that way from the other side. So, this is ready to slide in position. Alright, so we got it pushed back um, almost halfway maybe, a little more. And there's, a, there's like this little middle lip here. You can see right in there. I don't want to get close to it, but there's a metal up here. I think that's where the stuffing needs to go behind it. The stuffing you want to keep. And so if there's parts where when you're pushing it back and it's a little tight, use a little play knife or something to kind of, you know, get underneath there and push it back. Or you can fit your fingers in there, but I already got my fingers chopped off enough times. So I'll put that in my back there. Check on the side here. You can see there it's kind of coming out. So we'll give this a little push down here, make sure it's getting back okay. Keep in mind there's like hose and stuff behind here. And um, yeah, just tuck that behind that lip there. Now, as I'm pushing this back, this hose here is coming out, which is fine. So we're gonna attach that next, I think. And stuff like the drain and the power, see if we can look down here. Power hose is, the power hose, the power um, plug, outlet, whatever. All that stuff is back in here, or should be. Yeah, see it there? Well, how about now? Let me zoom in and illuminate it. There, you can barely see it. Well, I can barely see it, but... So that's fine. I'll, I'll reach back there and get a little bit of pull. And, um, I'll push this... Oh, scary. Anyways. I'll push this uh, machine back in more, but let's just take a look at how it is underneath. Make sure we're not stuck anything way back there, because I noticed that, um, yeah, there's some issues with that uh, valve and whatnot. So we're going to lay on the ground here and get a little look-see. All right, so I spy with my little eye the drain, which seems fine. But the part that does not seem fine is the water inlet hose. I do not see it back there. I do see it over on this side. So, get a little pull here. And, um, 
Yeah, I'm looking way back there and I don't see the valve coming through. This is a little hard because the valve just comes through and there's a, a big old mess of uh, padding back there, which is always so pliable. So I might have to shuffle this around in and out a little bit to get this through. Normally, if you're going to have a valve set up like this one here, you know, it's easy. you got your six foot waterline hose, whatever, come from the sink, and it's great. But um, where we're at now, it's not going to be great. It's going to be horrible. But, on the second hand, there's this um, blue piece right here, and that's where we'll put our golden hose to here. I'll wrap this around, make a nice little circle with it. Stick it in here. Get things out of the way. And of course, it needs to be twisted around the right way, and not the way it is now. So let's see here. Basically, anyway, I'm turning this thing. It's getting a kink. So there we go. All right, we got this on here, and, um, ah, screw it on. This is just basically like a hose bib. Same thing, if you want to cross the threads, this is, um, plastic we're screwing onto. The brass, so the brass will definitely do more damage. To the plastic and the plastic will do the brass. And we'll uh well that's not right. Hmm. Well I'm going to get this thing screwed on here. I might even have to pull it back out and readjust it and then screw it on. Which that is what I will do. Should be able to do it like that, but these low profile ones, they're low. So I'm going to pull it out forward and uh, see if I can do the plumbing works a little bit better than what I did here. Alright, so we have this little bracket here, you see. We have these tabs here. They go towards the right, okay? A little notch like that. And uh, if you look closely, there's actually some scoring lines right through these little um, cutout pieces in case you need to bend and snap off these things. Right, then you get some pliers on both ends of it and just, you know, wiggle back and forth until it snaps off. But this right here goes down to a slot in the front of the uh, dishwasher right in there. And, um... Something like that. Okay, and they both go to the right. These things here. Left side, right side. So I'll put them in there. And next what we want to do is get some little pliers. Maybe like so. Because on the back side of them, there is a, uh, like I said, the tabs go through. And the back side of these things, you want the tabs to be bent up some. Alright. You see the tabs there? And so I'll uh, try to grab them with. Something uh, more grabbable. Just get here, grab that tab, give it a bend. Alright. Get that one from behind. And, uh,. So you can give it a bend too, which I bet I can, but I need to get it like so, and there, I bent it. Okay, so that there locks that into place, and now it might be need some trim, but actually this control panel usually does sit underneath your counter. It's one of those ones where you uh, you put the soap in, the dishes, dishes are in, put the soap in, you punch what you want here, and I think hit start, which is over there. And then when you shut it, it starts. But we'll find out that in a little bit here.
and we're going to kind of test it out. All right, with these in here, I'm able to um, push it back more and um, probably work on the screws. Screws here, they came with these little ones, real flat head, and um, these are the old ones, a little thicker, a little bit fatter head. I have found sometimes that little flat heads are what you need so you don't rub against the door and stuff. Okay, we'll now see. it's back in here to fine tune it. Kind of, uh, you know, pull it out a little bit, push it back in, shuffle it around to get about the same kind of gap on both sides of the machine. Um, you know, check to make sure the door opens up and that it closes fine. And um, then you want to take a, uh, one of these little bobbers and uh, check for plumb up and down here, which um, it looks pretty good actually. It might be a little bit high in the front, which I said is okay. But I could drop it down and check for uh, left to right. Put it around here. Mm, that's looking pretty good too. I think the uh, leg over here is a little bit too high, so I'm going to go ahead and drop that into the body more. And that is just done on the bottom of the machine. There's legs down there. I uh, saw before and, and just, uh, you know, get like a little wrench or something on it to adjust it. So I'm get that done. And the tabs, I don't know, I can see the tabs here. Let me zoom in. The tabs do kind of come out a little bit, but if you're standing more up above it, you don't see it. So, maybe do some adjustments and get back to it. Alright, now that I got it where um, I want to situate that, it's time to put the screws in the brackets. I also snapped off the front of the bracket. And um, I've done a few of these before, and this here is an oak faced uh, cupboard. The thing about oak is that it's hard. And if it gets old, or you know, been for a while, it's been dried out. So I'm going to do a little pilot hole here of um, probably a sixteenth of an inch. Right in here. Like so. And then we can put the screw in there. Making sure you don't drop anything down the bottom down there. So if you're going to think you might drop something down there, you might want to put a cloth or something. All right. And it's still pretty hard even with that pilot hole. But rest assured, get it up in the cupboard, nice and tight. Oh, almost there. All right. So. I'll do the same on the other side, and that'll be it for the screws to be installed. Alright, now we got this guy here. And what's that for? That is for, on the bottom of this handle, there's a little hex head down here, right? And so what that's going to do is come up on here, the little nubs here, on each side it goes on there, and then you hex head it down. But, before that, I'm going to take off the protective plastic, plastic that's uh, coated in the front of this thing. It's a little loud. Let's see here. And it goes on the top too. Some people like to keep that on, you know, for a protection, but really it's not made for that. It's just for shipping protection. And in some cases, it could damage your appliance if you keep it on too long. All right, so that's right there. This off. And like I said, this uh, here just sits on top. And um, like 
so and then hex hit them underneath and just tighten the uh, hex head up in there like this all right good nice and tight now we're about ready except for we need to turn the water on all right so I turn the water on plug it in and get ready to test it out except for guess what there's a little bit of a leak underneath it and it's that whole hose with that that Tighten it hand tight and a quarter turn. Well, I tighten it more than a quarter turn now, and I think it's not leaking. It's a little loose in there. So that's where a stubby comes in handy, right? Little stubby wrenches. Um, anyways, the other thing I need to do here is hook it up to the drain. This particular model, as you can see back in there, I'll zoom in, has a drain like this under the sink. Alright. There, there's a 5 8 tube coming off of here and the pipe's going to go right on that and once again clamp down with a radiator hose. Now the pipe I have here is a little bit long still, it's 10 feet. I might take a whole foot off of it but first I want to make sure that it goes back through the cupboards um, nicely. Okay now you might not have that although I suggest that's a good thing to have if you could get it in. Um, what you might have is oh, the garbage disposal and here's my old guest star. This is for the next job probably. But we got a garbage disposal here. And right here is where a um, drain for your washer, dishwasher, goes into. And inside there's this plastic plug. So if you're hooking your dishwasher up to this or if you're changing your garbage disposal, you gotta make sure you knock out this plastic plug, just like a, a straight screw or something like that. And uh, make sure you get the plug out from inside before you install it. But, I don't like that. I like this up here instead. Because if this here rots, it's easy to change out. And I've seen many, many uh, garbage disposals where that's the problem, is that that little neck part where the dishwasher is, debris kind of hangs out there, either from using the disposer, disposer and it knocks back into it, and then, you know, your, your um, dishwasher blows it back out, but basically debris gets in there and it usually rots away. So, I avoid that if I can. Now this right here, I'm going to go back around and see if I can get this hose pulled back in the spot where it should be. And I'll cut some off and I'll attach it up here with the radiator clamp. Basically what you saw before, where I used radiator clamps on it before. And then it'll be time to Got test it out for ready to go. But another funny story is that I knew people that install these things. And they forgot to make sure they get everything out on the inside. So, inside here we've got some shipping stuff that goes away. we got uh, an energy guide. Usually it's hooked on a, a wire here. Come here, energy glory. I used to go away someplace, a customer. Um, this is not blue up here, it's a protectant. So we want that off before it gets washed and melts on or whatever. And this is a top rack. It also has some packing stuff and more. Uh, Fancy blue protectant. And this rack has some more oh, stuff to take off. Okay, is that it? That looks like it is it for the stuffing. Alright. So, take this off the rest of the way. And this top part off the rest of the way. The rest on the back. Alright, this might take another five hours to get this thing done. Um, otherwise, everything else in the bottom, heck, the whole bottom rack is out. Okay. Right, and make sure it's on top here. It doesn't look like anything top. There. Put that out. Push that all back in. And then we've got some controls up here on the top. Um, you can see them there, but uh, 
High temp, ball wash, extended pro dry, delays, cancel drain, washing dryer. And over on their site, we got a pro wash tough normal. I'm going to hit normal and start. Then I'm going to shut the door. Then I'm going to listen. What I'm listening for is some water filling it up. Oh, there it goes. And it should fill it up, and it should start doing its little wash thing. Usually I sit here and listen to it wash. Alright, it's washing now, so let it go for a little bit. Never else, I'll check the bottom. Now I'll open the door a little bit here. Let the water calm down. And see what's inside. Look at that, liquid. Mm-hmm. So, next I'll hit the cancel button. Uh, cancel drain, hold three seconds. One, two, three, four. Ah, cancel drain. Close it. And get ready to watch my drain pipes. So you can hear it drain down there. I'll check it up in here. Mm-hmm. So I it's going down the drain just fine. No leaks down here. Right, I'll check with my hand. Even a slight leak. Nope, dry. That is good. And um, last but not least would be to check on the bottom again and then secure the bottom panel. All right, with everything looking leak tight down here, it's time to wrap it up. So we have this kick plate that goes down here. And um, this kick plate has quite the padding behind it. Like I saw it earlier. So it's white fluff through you see. And so what we do here is the black side goes out front. I believe it's kind of uh kind of goes back in there and angles up. Like so. And then you just simply find the um quarter inch hex screw that we've taken out before. And um find a spot to go back into, which uh, hmm, is right there. No. Hmm. Alright, there's a um, adjustable um, adjustable thing on the back there. Let's see if I can show that to you. This is one. Other ones might just have a set one, but um, let's bring you around the side here. Move this over. Now you see that um, black thing right here? That can be brought down. So, I'm going to adjust it down some. There. Now that's on spot. And we'll put our uh, hex head back in. On this side here and hop over to the other. Snug it down real good. Hop over and do the same to that side. And that should cover it, folks. Questions, comments? Leave them down below. And, um, you know, there's, there's quite a bit to these things. But, you know, it beats hand washing, I think. 
I don't know. And yeah, the older ones, which didn't have such deep tubs, had more space down here to work with. The newer ones, you know, less space, more tub. But, you know, people aren't having their cupboards building higher. So, um, like I said, question, comments. If you like this, give it a thumbs up. Thumbs up. And, um, yeah, I'm just going to lay on the floor for a little bit. Oh, Jeb Doer, out.